Everything happens for a reason. There is a plan for you. Eventually, everything will fall into place. These maxims are often said, quoted, and ingrained in our minds. They're happy. Everyone wants to believe them because people like things that make them feel good. I'm not sure how I feel about a supernatural being, but it is comforting to believe the universe is looking out for you. Regardless of my desire to be comforted by a higher power, I reached a point in my life where I had a hard time believing that someone or something cared enough about me for these mantras to be true. It seemed too perfect, too naive. Now before I get to the heart of my story, I would like to say that so many good things have happened to me in the past few years. I've made so many friends and formed a lot of positive and supportive relationships. I've gotten stronger both physically and mentally, and I've learned a lot about myself and how I want to live my life. But all of these good things have either caused or resulted from some of the worst things to happen in the past few years. I'm going to be talking about sexual assault. I was asked to speak about something that fit the theme of resurfaced, and I cannot think of a more appropriate subject. This topic resurfaces in my life daily, as I'm sure it does in the lives of many others. And my story represents a bigger story that resurfaces throughout our society all too frequently, yet the stigma surrounding it has yet to disappear. Though the story I'm going to share with you today is primarily about sexual assault, it is not just sexual assault that I would like to address. It's trauma recovery and mental health as a whole. So if you do not relate to my story, please continue to listen in hopes of learning how to help a friend, a family member, or potentially your future self. I would also like to say that I'm not here to get sympathy or to revolutionize our community. In fact, even just sharing my story is going to be difficult. But I know I will have made an impact, and sharing my story will have been worth it, if I reach just one person in the audience today. So please, allow me to share my story, my response, and an attempt to make sense of it all. In the spring of my freshman year of high school, I met another freshman in my class. It started off slow and innocent. He was short and funny like all of the dorky best friends in a romantic comedy. He'd make me laugh so hard that I would cry. He was smart and athletic and could always cheer everyone up. This boy and I began to get closer and he eventually asked me out. We made our way to the end of freshman year and also began our sophomore year together. As we got deeper into sophomore year, my boyfriend and I began to have a few struggles. Our biggest fight happened towards the end of October, a fight I felt I was at fault for. After he seemed to have made up, my boyfriend asked me to meet him to watch a movie. When I got to him, he led me in a back door, down a flight of stairs, and into a dark corner that no one had been to in a long time. He told me to set my computer down, push me up against a wall, and began to kiss me. It didn't feel right. I stopped to ask about the seemingly forgotten movie, but he kept going. Trying to avoid another fight, I went along with it for a while. Now, I've thought a lot about what I should and should not include in the next part of my story, and for all of our benefit, I will leave out the disturbing details of what happened next. I'm not sure why he did what he did, why he ignored my protests. I don't think he was mad at me or just wanted to have sex. I can only guess that my boyfriend of seven months raped me because he felt threatened by our fight and insecure about our relationship. He was escorted off campus the following week. I did not choose to press charges, and that's the last that I heard. My initial strategy in dealing with this trauma was to ignore it, but my facade came crashing down exactly four months later when a male friend of mine assaulted me in my car. I was hurt. Not only had I been sexually assaulted once, but I'd been sexually assaulted twice in the span of four months. Everything inside of me told me that I'd messed up, as if I was the one who planned, coordinated, and executed these acts. I hit my lowest point. I had no motivation to do anything. I was carrying guilt and embarrassment. I stopped eating. I was done. 
I have since been diagnosed with anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, and depression, though I refuse to let these things define me. I used to cry almost every day, but would laugh as well. I still often have anxiety or PTSD attacks, but I just as often have good times with friends. I'm making my way towards recovery, but it is long and hard work. Anxiety tells you that you're not doing enough, that you're not good enough. Depression tells you that there's no point in doing anything, even life. And PTSD tells you that bad things have happened and are happening again. It's a dangerous combination. And it's hard to live with such a heavy weight on top of you. No matter how badly I wanted to be happy and have fun, my body wouldn't let me. Whenever friends invited me out, I would avoid joining if there was even the slightest possibility of being in an unfamiliar situation with unfamiliar people. And for the longest time, even the slightest touches could get a reaction out of me. Some made me sick enough to throw up or pass out. I hit a point so low that no one or no thing could have dragged me out of it. I honestly don't know what changed inside of me, but one day I realized that if I wanted even a chance at normalcy or happiness, I would have to work to make that happen for myself. I opened my mind to therapy and medication. I surrounded myself with people who would support me and not drag me down. And slowly, as I began to invest in myself and my recovery, I began to cry less, laugh more, and I became a stronger person than I ever knew was possible. I refused for a long time to acknowledge that what happened to me was rape. The word rape felt too personal, too victimizing, and too accusatory towards my assaulter. But I have since realized that I'm the one that has to deal with the anxiety, the PTSD, the depression, and all of the negative consequences of somebody else's actions on a daily basis and therefore what happened to me deserves an accusatory title. It's taken a lot of time and a lot of work to get to where I am today. Like I said before, I've had an amazing group of people show me an endless amount of love. My mom, my dad, my brother, friends from home, friends from high school, and my group of friends here at Case. These people have picked me up, dusted me off, and encouraged me to keep going. Despite all these positive improvements in my life, I received a lot of backlash for coming forward with my story, especially at the beginning. And one of the hardest parts of recovery has been learning to ignore outside opinion. Society today is so much more accepting of people reporting these kinds of stories than it was a few years ago, but that does not mean we don't face opposition. Since reporting, I've been thoroughly questioned on the validity and credibility of my story, as I'm sure many others who have had similar experiences have as well. And despite having physical evidence of what happened that night, others' opinions have often made me question the validity of my own memory. I've also been judged for taking time and space for myself and my recovery because my story wasn't bad enough. But I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter what you have been through or what others believe, you are valid. Through this whole process, I've learned to listen to the opinions who matter, listen to myself, and give myself what I need, because I do not need somebody else's permission to love myself, and no assault or a critic can take that away from me. Thankfully, not everyone will experience the same type of physical and emotional trauma that I have endured, but we all encounter obstacles in our life. Mental health is not something that can be brushed under the rug. It's an ongoing battle we have to choose to fight on a daily basis. It does not matter how minor you believe the trauma is. If it is impacting you, it is important. You can't just ignore trauma and mental health, or it will continue to resurface in other aspects of your life. For me, it resurfaces through PTSD attacks. For others, it might be a loss of sleep or appetite, anxiety, nausea, pain, and on and on. A common misconception in our society is that trauma is comparable, but I'm a firm believer that it is not. It's this line of thinking that prevents people from getting the help that they need. I don't want anyone to leave here today thinking, oh, I wasn't raped, so I must be doing okay. That's not the point. We all have our own unique experiences that may impact us differently. You don't have to hit rock bottom for you to get help. I actually hope that you don't. I stayed in denial for so long that it almost cost me my life, 
and looking back, I wish I would have been able to accept the help that was extended to me sooner. So please, check in with yourself and choose to fight the battle in the best way that you can. The next biggest lesson I learned in my recovery is that bad days do not mean a loss of progress. Everyone who knows me knows that I still have bad days. I still get anxious and depressed. I'm a college student who's working through my trauma. It's expected that I'm not perfect. But at the beginning of my recovery, I did not realize that that was an acceptable expectation to have. I thought that any minor setback meant complete failure. The first step in my recovery was choosing to get help. But the next step, the one I have to take every day, is accepting that progress is not linear and that I'm allowed to have bad days. So to anyone else who has taken that first step in recovery, please keep in mind that every day will not be better than the last, and that's more than okay. So maybe some of the mantras are true. There may be a light at the end of the tunnel. Everything may not happen for a reason, but I'm beginning to believe that everything will fall into place. I do not want my history to be what defines me. I'm taking steps forward, trying to make progress, and doing everything I can to use the traumas I've experienced to give me perspective and not hold me back. I want to say everything will be okay, but I don't know that yet. So I can take comfort in believing that maybe the universe is looking out for me. And even if that's not true, I have an amazing support system who is looking out for me and always will. My goal today was to share my story in hopes that one of you will leave here with a greater understanding and more perspective in the event that you are faced with a similar situation. So, to anyone that has had a friend go through this, any parent that has had a child go through this, any teacher that's had a student come forward about this, you can make a difference in how this person views their trauma and moves forward with their life. And to anyone who is struggling, invest in your own recovery, lean on those around you, and always love yourself. Thank you.